Okay, viewers, so I am very excited about this new Mortal Kombat movie that's about to come out. However, there are two major problems with this trailer that we have to fix right now before we can continue with this review. Mortal Kombat! Now before I go into the trailer itself and break that down, I do need to establish a little bit of context here for what I like and what are maybe some of my concerns about the trailer. Ah, viewer, I remember very well back in the golden age of arcade fighting games. Back in 1991, you would get into an arcade and pretty much everyone would be surrounding the Street Fighter II cabinet. And if there weren't too many people around, you'd kind of fight your way through and place your quarter or your token at the top row of the front cabinet part, and that would indicate your place in line. Now, for some of you, that might just be kind of a funny little history lesson. But for those of you who were a bit older like I am, you're welcome for a little bit of nostalgia. Then one day, I remember walking into the arcade and suddenly everyone was around a different machine. This new Mortal Kombat thing. So I pushed my way through to see what all the hubbub was because, you know, back in those days we used to use the word hubbub. Yeah, we did. Don't listen to him. Now, don't get me wrong, we had seen digitized graphics before. Just about a year or two earlier, we had a game called Pit Fighter, which I always thought was actually a really fun game to play. I still, I think I played it like a year ago. I found it in some old arcade area, and I still thought, yeah, this is still fun, honestly. But Pit Fighter had nothing on what Mortal Kombat was going to bring to the arcade world. I remember the first time watching two people play, Sub-Zero versus Kano, and the guy who was playing a Sub-Zero won. And then it happened. He walks over, and Sub-Zero lifts the head off of Kano. And my little 12-year-old mind was blown. I remember looking around like, whoa, did, did, did everyone just see what just happened? Oh my god, are, are there any parents around? No? Good because this game looks cool and I want to play it. And thus, the whole Mortal Kombat craze, which still very much lives through to today, was born. Now, flash forward to 1995, and the Mortal Kombat movie comes out. And I went to go see it with a good friend of mine, and honestly, my expectations were far exceeded. I thought it was a really fun movie, and I thought the fights, including Scorpion, Johnny Cage, Sub-Zero... And of course, Liu Kang, I thought those fights were phenomenal. They were very well choreographed, really well done. Yeah, you had some questionable ones that was kind of like, you know, maybe the, the hits were off just a little bit. You know, Sonya's fight with Kano was kind of boring. And when Goro fought um, Foot Soldier Extra Guy number three... Whatever that guy was that we were supposed to be feeling like, no, don't kill extra guy number three, like whoever that guy was, I thought that fight was kind of stupid, but that had more to do with the fact that Goro looked like a bad Jim Henson's character. Yeah, it's like a really bad Muppet. Now, the great thing about the first Mortal Kombat film was it knew exactly what it wanted to be. You know, it wasn't trying to be Casablanca with ninjas. Ooh. Never mind. It wanted to be a quality video game adaptation. And that's exactly what it was. Yeah, it was PG-13, but honestly, at the time, that I thought that was a fantastic choice, right? Because there were plenty of teenagers, you know, under the 17 age rating, who were going to go see this film, including me. And so it, it did well in the box office because largely, as I mentioned, the fighting was good. The music was really good. And again, it was just fun. Then came Mortal Kombat 2, Annihilation. Oh, oh. sorry. I think my mind was like trying to forcefully suppress that memory again. 
it's a bad movie. Like, not good bad, just bad. And that takes us to the trailer for the new Mortal Kombat movie coming out. You know, what I like about the trailer is that the characters look really fierce, certainly more fierce than the first movie. And everything looks a bit darker, grittier, right? The move, the moves look a little more visceral. And in that way, it follows more the game itself. Additionally, I do think they're taking a bit of a chance here with an R rating, but it's a smart chance to take right now. And it's a valid interpretation for what is a violent game that pretty much changed the way that we buy video games today. Now, something that the first movie did not do well is integrate special moves with normal combat mechanics. So Liu Kang's fire or Sub-Zero's ice and even Scorpion's bird. It almost looked like a bird coming out of his wrist kind of thing. All that looked very clunky and, you know, after the fact, forced in terms of editing. It just didn't, it didn't integrate well. But in this trailer, I thought Sub-Zero's frost or his ice looked pretty good. The fire looks pretty good. So I'm looking forward to seeing how they're able to integrate all of that together into quality fighting mechanics. Now, my concerns for this trailer connect back with something that I talked about in my context section, and that is the first movie knew what it wanted to be, a good video game adaptation, and it really kind of leaned into that, and we loved it for that. With this trailer, however, I found myself watching it and going, there's an awful lot of talking going on here. Not sure you need that much. You see, I think a growing trend in Hollywood lately is they're hearing people say, we want better stories, right? Forget the CGI, forget the rehashing and rebooting of things. Just give us good stories. And they're taking that and now they're over-processing plot and story. I'll give you an example of what I mean. Another trailer that has me quite concerned in terms of over-processing is Godzilla vs. King Kong. You know, they're talking about, oh, and this person here controls King Kong, and if she's not around, then this guy has to come in. He's got it. It's like, whoa, listen, hold on. You need to get in contact with your 10 or 12-year-old self and ask that self, what kind of a plot do we need for a large lizard and a giant ape? Here's the plot in like five seconds. Godzilla fights King Kong. They're a draw. Something bigger comes along. They come together to defeat that something bigger. They walk away. That's the end of the movie. That's all you need. Now, in terms of Mortal Kombat, I mean, Earth is in trouble. We need to send our best warriors. They need to win. Ta-da! I mean, that's all you really need for this movie, quite honestly. My final concern is Goro still looks like a bad Jim Henson's Muppet. What is this? Mortal Kermbat? Finish him. Get over here. So let me know in the comments below. What do you think? What are you excited about? Do you have any concerns like I do about, you know, the possibility of overprocessing this plot and whatnot? Or are you just excited and ready to sort of dance more techno? 